everybody, it's the War Hipster here. Welcome to another painting tutorial. And today we are kicking off our How to Paint the First Founding Chapters series with How to Paint Space Wolves. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in. We're not going to talk too much. We're going to go straight into painting. This guy has been primed with grey here because he's a space wolf and we want him to be nice and cold and wintry. Now, the first colour we're going to use is Space Wolves Grey, and this is going to be for all of his armour. Now, what we want to do is we want to use a medium layer brush, or a reasonable equivalent size from other manufacturers. And what you want to do is you want to just start painting the Space Wolves Grey all over those armour panels. Now, we want this to be as smooth a coat as possible, so we are going to go very methodically, taking it a panel at a time, just making sure that we're finishing off those sections as we do them. But it doesn't matter if it gets a little bit streaky here and there, because what we are going to do is we're going to enrich that colour using a glaze after this. We want to create as little work as possible for ourselves when we do that glaze. glaze. So that's why we're going to take it nice and steady, like I'm doing here make sure that we get good coverage all over the miniature. Nice and smooth. Like this. And so with all that Space Wolves grey applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part rust grey mix. And what I mean by that is you take basically 10 brushfuls of contrast medium to one brushful of rust grey to make this really, really, really thin, almost like water, rust grey glaze type thing, as you can see. It's very, very subtle. So what we're going to do now with that is over the top of these flat armor panels is we are just going to start coating this rust gray over the top like this just avoiding any of the recesses and what this is going to do is it's just going to strengthen out that color plus also color cover up kind of smooth out any of those kind of darker blotches that we might have might have left behind. So we just want to do this as I say just on the flats of the panels like I've just done there on the knee pad and if you can just avoid any of the edges as well 
because that way you get your first highlight done for you on all those armor panels. And there you can really see the difference that that makes to kind of how vibrant the color is. Just making it all the more space wolfy. I just want to just make sure that you get it all over that panel. So here on the foot. And with that done, don't worry too much about getting the uh, the armor all highlighted at this stage. What we want to do is we actually want to color in a few more base coats before we do that, just so that in case we make any mistakes, we don't have to make more work for ourselves going back and correcting it. So what we are going to do is we're going to use some Eandon yellow. We're going to use this on his left shoulder pad. So what we want to do is we're going to take a good amount of this on our brush, and we just want to start painting this all over the inside that shoulder pad like this just using the brush to just pick up any excess so I've got a little bit too much there just gonna pull it off like that so moving around the other side And with that yand and yellow applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some black Templar. I'm going to use this on a couple of different areas. Firstly, we're going to use it to colour in all of the art soft armour joints. So there's one nice obvious one just here on his hand. So we're just going to use this black Templar all over like that. We're also going to use this on his weapons. So on this chainsword here, I'm just going to get a nice dollop of black Templar, just in one big broad brushstroke. Make sure that we get it right around that little ri ri rivet at the end. We're just going to apply this black Templar all over the casing of the chainsword. And in the case of any bolt rifles that you might have, it's the same deal, just like that. I want to make sure that we get this little bit here. And similarly underneath and on the other side. Like that. What we also want to do is we're going to use this black Templar to color in the wolf icon on the shoulder pad. Just want to be really careful here around that e and in yellow like that wash the brush because we've got a little too much black template on our brush take a smaller amount just want to be very careful here as we do this so as not to get this on all that yellow that we've already painted and with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Blood Angels Red. And this is going to be to paint in the other shoulder pad. So what we want to do is we'll just take a fair amount of this on our brush. I'm just going to start from the front here. 
And we're just going to start very smoothly painting this Blood Angels red all over that shoulder pad. Like this. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some wildwood. And we're going to use this to paint in all of the leather details. This will include any of the holsters and pouches, his belt. Like this. The wildwood. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thin down Retributor armor to paint in all of the gold details. So this is going to be areas like the Aquila on his chest, this wolf skull icon down here on his belt, the kind of little casing thing here on the wolf pelt just hanging off his belt as well, and any of the other details that you want to be gold. And with all that retributor armor applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some thin down iron warriors. I'm going to use this on all the silver parts. So this is going to include areas like the handle on and the pistol in his holster, the mechanical and the blades area of the chainsaw, as well as things like the vents on his backpack. And realistically, any of the areas that you want to be silver as well. And so with all of those metallics applied, what we're now gonna do is shade them. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work on that gold and the color that we're gonna use is Fire Slayer Flesh. Now this is just to give it a kind of really warm feel, but also kind of make it feel almost a little um, like, like kind of antique-y. Uh, but without being worn out like we would get if we used Basilicanum Grey. Now because of the strength of Fire Slayer Flesh, you've got to be very careful with how much you're putting on, because a little goes a very long way. So just use small amounts here, like I'm doing. And just being careful around all of that Space Wolves Grey armour that we've already painted in. And with that Fire Slayer Flesh Applied, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Basilicanum Grey. And this is going to be to shade all of the silver details. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're actually just going to... I'm not entirely happy with how strong the colour is here on the yellow shoulder pad. So what I am going to do is I'm going to try and add a little bit more vibrancy to it in the same way that we did with the main bulk of the Space Wolves armor. Now what I'm going to make is a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Uriel yellow mix. And the reason it's less than you would say do with the Mephiston red one, which would be a 10 to one, the six to one is because Uriel yellow, once you start adding too much, it just becomes, it becomes really difficult to work with because the pigment itself is quite thin. So I've got this kind of year eel yellow-esque glaze. What I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna start painting this all over that shoulder pad, just avoiding the darkest recesses where the Yandan yellow has settled, just to kind of strengthen up the main bulk color of that shoulder pad. Now you can use this technique to cover only kind of, cover only any splotches 
that you might have left. As you can see already, that looks a little bit more stronger in terms of the yellow. Um, to avoid this in the future, if possibly giving the shoulder pad a coat of wraith bone before we did the and yellow would make it appear warmer because realistically that's what this Yuri or yellow is doing here. It's just making that yellow much warmer to look at. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some skeleton hoard. I'm going to use this to paint in a little tooth here hanging off of his shoulder pad. As you can see that Yuri or yellow glaze has really warmed up that yellow shoulder pad. But what we're also going to do I'm just going to use this skeleton hoard to paint in his hair. Like so. And with that done, what we're going to use is some skeleton hoard, wildwood and some black templar. We're going to use this paint in this little wolf pelt here. So what we do first is we take our skeleton hoard like this and we just paint this all over this little tail thing. Like this, making sure that we just go all the way around before we finish. And move on to the next colour. Like that. And so, with that done, we wash the brush and then we grab some wild wood. And we're going to, from the bottom of the tail to about two thirds of the way up, just add one brush load of this wild wood. Like this, whilst it's still wet. Then we wash the brush and then we grab a small amount of black templar. Not very much. And just on the tip of the tail, we add it like that. And then you wash your brush once more. And then just with a clean brush, just start kind of feathering out where those colours are meeting. Just doing lots of tiny little brush strokes like this to kind of just blend all those colours in together and also just to kind of move around any excess paint that you might have on it, on the model that you don't want there, because you don't want like a large dark patch. Like that. So there you go. You have this lovely little fade going on between all three colors. And with that done, what we're gonna do is gonna grab some Basilicarnum Gray. I'm gonna use this just to paint in a little stone icon that he's carrying on his shoulder pad. Like that. And next up, I'm going to paint in the face. And the colour we're going to use for this is Fire Slayer Flesh. And so we just want to be careful now around all those colours that we've already painted in. We're just going to add this Fire Slayer Flesh all over his skin. Like this. And with that done, it's now time to start adding some highlights. And so what we're basically going to do is we're going to go back down the order. So we're going to start with the face and move out to the armour. So the colour that we're going to be using for this is some thinned down flayed one flesh. And as I say, this is just going to be for the skin. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take this small amount of flayed one flesh on our, flesh on our brush. And we're going to start picking out all the sharpest points on his skin. Like this. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some wraith bone. I'm gonna use this to color in his teeth as well as the whites of his eyes.
And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to take a really small amount of black Templar. I'm going to use this to color in these pupils. Just take this tiny amount of black Templar, and just put a dot of it right in the middle. Like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some pallid witch flesh. I'm going to use this to add a highlight to all of his hair, to the little fang on his, uh, hanging off his um, shoulder pad, as well as to highlight any of the little strands on this little fur pelt thing down here as well. Just want to go around doing all of this with the pallid witch flesh, and then we'll come back. And next up with that done, what we are now going to do is we're going to highlight all of that silver and the color that we're going to use is iron hand steel so we've got some thin down on our palette and what we're just going to do is we're just going to start picking out all of the edges on all of those silver details and with that iron hand still applied what we're now going to do is we're going to use some sycorax bronze i'm going to use this to highlight all of that gold like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is highlight all of that Space Wolves armor and the color we're going to be using is some thinned down blue horror. And so all we want to do is we're going to take this blue horror and just start running it over all of those edges around the miniature. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Administratum Grey to highlight any of the black details, particularly the wolf icon on the shoulder. So you just want to pick out all these little sharp edges. Like this, with the Administratum Grey. With that administratum grey applied, all that is left to do is to paint in his pack markings. Now, all Space Wolves will have a pack marking and they will have the same pack marking as the rest of their unit. And generally with Battle Line guys, you've got a red field with a black design on top of it. Particularly, well, Hunter packs, Claw packs, packs are different. Basically read your codex. <laughs> So what we are going to be doing is, here is one I've painted earlier, we're going to be recreating that little design there on this guy's shoulder pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar. And we're going to use a really fine brush for this. I've got an insane detail brush here. And so what we want to do is basically, so we're going to start by just drawing the outline of the design. So the first Port of Call is to paint in the first triangle, like I'm doing here. Right, so that's our first line, and our second line is going to come down this way. like that and then what we're going to do is coming from I feel along the same kind of invisible line going like this we're going to draw the next one in a straight line so that it meets the other line to create that kind of zigzag. Pattern like that. 
I'm going to measure all the next one. Same as before. Just using small amounts of black tempo each time we go to the pot. Like that. And we've got our final one. Again, along that visible, invisible line. So kind of like diagonally going like this. Our invisible line here. And we paint our final. Line. Don't worry too much if you make any kind of shaky mistakes. You can always correct them by creating a roughly 10 parts contrast medium to one part Mephiston red glaze, and then just going over it. So now that we've drawn our outline, what we're gonna do is gonna grab some Black Templar, and we're just gonna start blocking in this design. And with that done, our model is now finished. And all that is left to do is to base him. Now I recommend always that you base him in the same style as the rest of your army. But if you'd like to see how I did it, you can check out the How to Paint Space Wolves Combat Patrol video and follow along with that one. And there we have it, one Space Wolves Intercessor Sergeant ready to lead his pack across the battlefield of the 41st millennium. I adore this scheme and I adore the, the, the techniques that we've explored in this one. Simply put a Space Wolves grey layer with a rust grey glaze and you achieve 90% of this effect. It's, it's absolutely breathtaking, I think. <laughs> If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.